Are you done being told what to do and think it's about time you become your own boss? Well, today's show is for you. Today's guest, Donna Delia, is a pro makeup artist, business owner, and coach. She's here to talk about her line of makeup and the moment she knew it was time to step up and move into the world of entrepreneurship. Hi guys, welcome to the Creators Club where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. Uh, I'm David George and I'm sitting here with Donna Delia. How are you? Hello. Um, when I met you, um, you were doing makeup for BeautyCon for yeah. my friend Tiff McFierce. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember we had our conversation, you talked about your journey and some of your story and some, some business workshops that you have went to. Mm-hmm. And you also told me about you having your own cosmetics line. Yeah. And instantly, um, I felt like we connected with just kind of seeing eye Absolutely. to eye with what we believe in and how we move, how we, how we move in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I thought was most impressive was the fact that you had your own cosmetics line. I feel like a lot of people, um, a lot of artists usually have excuses and they'll say, you know, I'm, I'm going to wait until I have a lot of followers or I'm going to wait until right. um, I have the money to invest. So I just kind of want to know what's your story? What What's your story um, and, and what made you decide to move into entrepreneurship and start your own cosmetics line? Well, I definitely think the fear of the no followers and all of that was very present. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of ignored it. I was like, oh, well, whatever. Like, I can't. I took a lot of workshops that really talk about not waiting for the oh, I'll do this when. Yes. Because we don't know when that will happen and we don't even know if we'll make it to that one. Exactly. We don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. Yeah. So um, it was very much always in that mindset, like, do it now. Like, why wait? Right. And what got me into entrepreneurship was definitely my boyfriend because he's been his own business owner uh, since he graduated college. He's a videographer and has his own video marketing company where he does marketing for corporations, real estate, um, just all around Southern California. And I've been a makeup artist for the last 10 years. And my the company I was working for, I was working at a store in Beverly Hills. And the store was going to be closing because there was no traffic. Uh-huh. And they offered me different positions. And my boyfriend was like, well, why don't you start a makeup line? And in my head, I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted a makeup school. Okay. So then okay. that's still going to happen. That, like... I always wanted to make up school because I'm really passionate about teaching right. and I truly love seeing other people succeed, especially knowing that I had a say in that and can watch their journey and just see happy little babies fly, fly. Um, and so he knew that. And one of the reasons I wanted a makeup school was because I wanted to be able to provide students with very effective kits that when they graduated, they didn't need to spend more money. They were already set to go because right now what's so in the industry for makeup schools is that these kids get kits that are very more on the consumer side. They're not the best for being a professional. Oh, it won't hold up as great on camera. Um, it doesn't have the longevity, and it also doesn't have the textures. A lot of the stuff they were getting is very packed with glitter and shimmer, and Ooh. trust me, I like the glitter and shimmer, <laughs> but it doesn't look good on TV. I and see. the majority of what these kids are going to do is going to be TV makeup. We're in Los Angeles. Um, and so my boyfriend hearing that was like, that's when he was like, well, why don't you just start a makeup line so you can make the products that the students need and then you can provide them in your school. That is amazing. So, yeah, so it kind of <laughs> took a, a change up and I was like, well, I don't know. And he was like, well, do you know how to sell makeup? And I'm like, yeah, I've done, I was a retail makeup artist for like 10 years. I worked yeah. for MAC, I worked in Sephora, I worked for Makeup Forever, I worked for Marc Jacobs. So there was always, I'm used to that. Mm. I understand women and I really enjoy connecting with the everyday woman on just bringing, helping her feel more confident with like a simple highlighter or something like that. It's very empowering to see on my end how little work I have to do for someone's day to just be like, huh, I feel like I can take over the world now <laughs> just because of lipstick. So that kind of started the journey and mm-hmm. him and his parents basically financed us in the beginning, which was like the money thing was, okay. where the hell am I going to get money for right, this? Right, right. But literally the day he brought it to me, the next day I was talking to one of my girlfriends about what he, we talked about. I'm like, Greg said I should start a makeup line. And she goes, oh, you know, one of my friends is a cosmetic consultant. Wow, and I was like, shut the front it. door. That. Like, <laughs> that was perfect timing. So then we met with her. And like, yeah. then they introduced us to different labs that were in Los Angeles. Then we went to Cosmoprof, which is a... Um, Cosmoprof is a big convention that is more business to business. And it's for also people who are looking to start their own skincare, hair care, any kind of beauty line. They can go there to meet manufacturers from all over the world, meet packaging companies from all over the world. Uh, it's huge, and it's in Sorry, Vegas. what's the name of the, work, the program again? Cosmoprof. Cosmoprof. And okay. Cosmoprof has stores 
are like you can just go and shop as a professional. Oh, okay. But this is a specific convention um, slash trade show that people will go who have salons to look for brands to sell in their store. And if you're a business owner, there's also, like I said, manufacturers and labs that come from all over the world. I'm talking Asia, mm-hmm. Europe, um, so forth that will be there that you can meet in person as opposed to just like emailing back and forth. You really have that FaceTime. Right. And you can schedule meetings with them during the convention mm-hmm. um, and just sit down and talk to them. So Cosmo Prof. Mm-hmm. Cosmo Great. Prof. Cosmo Prof. So I'm going to put a link um, yeah. below so you guys can go and check that out. How often do they do uh, um, Well, they happen all over the world, but the one in... America, or Americas, I should say. It's in Vegas around July, I believe. So okay. it's going to come up next year. Uh, and it's fantastic. Amazing. Yes, yeah. so that link will be down there. All right. That's such I a just want to go back real quick. Yeah, sure. So I want to talk about two things. I want to okay. talk about waiting, and then I want to talk about possibility. Waiting? Yeah. Okay. So um, I love the saying, are you waiting or creating? So you, earlier you were talking oh. about how like, most people, they, they want to wait until this mm. moment. And we, like you said, we don't know when that moment's gonna come, right. or if we even promise tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm a huge advocate in just start. Just mm-hmm. start and you'd be surprised at the amount of progress that you can make in six months versus you waiting six months to try to save up yeah. X, X, Y, and Z amount of money to invest. I always use this example like when I first started building websites. Mm-hmm. I built my first website when I was about, I built my first website when I was about 15 or 16 years oh, old. Wow, and I didn't it, even and know it that. popped up on my uh, Facebook news feed the other day and it was just awful. Awful, awful, awful. Like but your memories? Just, yeah, in the memories. And it was just awful. But my reason for bringing this up is that I uh, build my website still till today. And when I look at my, my website today, I'm like, that's the reason why it's great now is because I started then. Yeah. I absolutely. started then. I worked on it little by little and I got better at it and I taught myself and I learned and I applied. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I just encourage everybody do not wait. Like just start. Yeah. Even if it's just reading a book, asking someone a question, yeah. going to visit an old teacher, just start somewhere. Well, and um, I actually, sorry, Dad. That's okay. I tend to believe that once you start, you're creating that intention mm-hmm. and everything will fall into place if you stay focused. Exactly. I think people are afraid of, they wonder about what, what if and what can happen and they're creating problems that don't necessarily exist yet. That's absolutely true. When if true. you just start, like, as you said, even just reading a book, you're starting that motion mm-hmm. and the world, the universe will give you what you want. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of you asking for it and sticking to your intention and not doubting yourself. Yeah, so piggybacking off of yeah. intention, you had mentioned in, or a little bit earlier that once your uh, boyfriend is like, hey, Sutter Cosmetology, I mean, a cosmetics line, and then all of a sudden, everything just started to align itself. Yes. It was like you had someone that was willing to invest in you. Mm-hmm. You had someone that knew a uh, um, cosmetics consulting. consulting yeah. Like, intention, that's intention. You starting and you kind of just opened up that possibility for yourself. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, so a huge uh, goal of mine with the Creators Club is to kind of be that go-to resource, similar to how you want to provide uh, that kit to students coming out of school. Mm-hmm. You want them to be prepared for the industry they're going into. Right. Right? So that's pretty much what I'm trying to accomplish here with the Creators Club. We started talking a little bit before the camera started rolling, um, and I mentioned how uh, I want this to kind of be a go-to source for people that live in cities that don't have uh, resources or access to mentors or people that are in this game and that know about it. And uh, you mentioned that you grew up in New York City and (laughs) you still kind of felt like you didn't have those resources. Right. So I grew up in Boston, and... um, there's not, it's not a huge industry for entertainment over there. There are people that dance, there are people that do makeup, there are people that do those things, don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is there are not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of jobs. They're very, very scarce. So even people teaching you how to really exist in an industry like this. Hmm. So um, a lot of people who come from those type of uh, uh, situations or environments tend to move to New York City or to Los Angeles to pursue their dreams. Um... When I moved to New York City, I thought I knew what I was doing, and when I got there, I realized that I didn't. I fell flat on my face, oh, and no. um, I was in school, and it was just super, super, super stressful. And the one thing that I had wished is that I knew a lot more about what I was getting myself into before I went there. Hmm. So that's the goal of the Creators Club. It's to kind of teach people uh, business and career uh, development, professional development hmm. as a whole, just what are those business tools that you should know. You'd be surprised about uh, by the amount of people that can't even write an email. You know yeah. what I mean? So we really want to, we'll go through step by step, like when you're writing an email to an agent, what should it say? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And how do you format it? So just little things like that's that. Awesome. That I really want people to be on there 100% professionally developed. Because that's That's like people. number one. Yeah. That's hard for people because I think, I think the reason for that is that people focus so much on uh, just talent, just being talented. Mm-hmm. And that's literally like, in my opinion, less than half of what this game is. Well, and honestly, I think everyone just focuses on looking good. Yeah. So people just think if there's something that's not going to make them look good, they're afraid to do it. Right. And I think that when you start your own business and even just 
even if you're not starting your own business, but even if you're applying for a new job or a new career path, um, be open to being vulnerable and looking bad. Right. Because a lot that like even when I've done things, I'm like, that was absolutely ridiculous. Like, oh my God, why did I do that? I still will have someone message me and be like, oh, I love this. Right. And right. I'm like, right. you never know who you might touch. We have our own opinions and that's not the same opinion from somebody yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So again, moral of the story is you just got to start somewhere and it's mm -hmm. like, you're going to fail. So what? Uh, someone I think Lily Singh had mentioned in a video that I saw not too long ago where it's just like, hurry up and fail. Do it, make the mistake, <laughs> learn from it, and then yeah. you're gonna go on to the next thing. And there's definitely gonna be a lot of right, in right. Space. You know I what I mean? I've done a lot. Um, so again, from our conversation before uh, we started today, you said even though you grew up in New York, you didn't know that this career was a possibility. Talk yeah. to us about that. So I grew up in New York City. I'm originally from Brooklyn, and my family is all Italian, and they all work for somebody else for the most part. Mm -hmm. Nobody has their own. No one's a freelancer because I'm also a freelance makeup artist. Yeah. So. Um, once I started the line and that other store closed down, I didn't take any of their jobs and I was just like, I'm just going to freelance. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Um, and that's also scary to my family just because they're so used to something that's steady and guaranteed. Yeah, same with mine. And they just like work for different, like they work for lawyers, they work for doctors, um, they work for somebody and there's always something guaranteed. So I was never encouraged to start something new. I was encouraged to go after my dreams. And so I always liked theater, I always liked entertainment, I always liked makeup. So I was like, okay, go work for a makeup company. Mm. Like once I graduated college, I became a manager at MAC, I did fashion week, I was doing theater stuff. I was doing a lot of cool jobs, and so I felt pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then I got hired by Makeup Forever as a trainer, and then I started traveling all over the world doing classes, doing events, and again, I felt really cool. I was like, this is perfect. I can easily do this for the rest of my life. But you still have to answer to somebody. Right. And working, <laughs> even if you have your dream job, there's still going to be complications where you're going to be like, oh, I wish they would just listen to me. Or, hey, why don't we try this? Yeah. You can never just do what you want to do. Yeah. There's always somebody else you have to answer to, and that's not a problem. And there are people who are comfortable doing that. And that's great. Like, please do what you know you are comfortable with. Um, however, for me, I would get very angry. <laughs> I was always like, oh, I just like, just let me try. How yeah. do you know, like, maybe I'm going to do something that's going to be right. awesome. And I, it just didn't occur to me until I met my boyfriend. And he constantly talked about it. And in New York, it's very finance. It's very fashion. It's, you don't really always meet people who are starting their own businesses. You meet a lot of freelancers, yeah. which can be scary. Mm -hmm. But freelancing is in when I was in New York is when I met people that were in the union and were doing all these things. I was like, oh, I do want to be a freelancer one day. Okay. But it wasn't in. I still was in that area of like, I don't have enough money to just freelance. Like, I need to have this amount of money in the bank so I can be guaranteed that if I don't make enough money this month, I'll be covered. You'll be all right. Yeah. And so I never became a freelancer until I moved here and the store closed. I got a severance. Greg is like, let's start this line, and I was like. It's either now or never. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. I was thirty. I was like, it's let's just see what happens. Yeah. Um, especially because everything just started happening, um, and I do feel like in LA people are, they dream bigger. Yeah, they do. I think people go to New York with big dreams, and that's it. I don't that's see. I, do you know a lot of people in New York that actually started um, their own? Like no, actual I didn't. businesses. No, I didn't. Because there's a, like I said, there's a lot of freelancers, yeah. and I have a ton of my friends who are in the union mm -hmm. and. They're doing awesome. They're doing great big things. They're working on the coolest celebrities at the moment and the biggest shows. Um, and they work for themselves because you are your own boss when yeah. you are a freelancer. Uh, and then it comes to me where like having my own business and having inventory and having overhead, there's a lot more money that has to go into it right. um, because you have to pay for marketing. You have to pay for a website. Well, well there you go. <laughs> um, and that's what I'm saying when I say like that's what Creators Club teaches. We teach you those things. So yeah. people that want to go into business, they just think, oh, I just make some merchandise and I put it out there and everybody buys it. But there's all those little things that if you don't know how to manage a business, yeah. you will fail. You know what I, I mean? do think being a manager, mm -hmm. um, especially being a manager at MAP, mm -hmm. really helped me understand little bits of it because yeah. I worked a lot with operations mm -hmm. and I think if I didn't have that, I would be a little lost because yeah. I am very good with organizing. I can make Excel spreadsheets. I know how to do like, you know, weekly agendas that we have to go through. Mm -hmm. And though, even though I know all of it, it can still be challenging because you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, my boyfriend is my partner. Um, and he does a lot of our marketing materials yeah. and our photo shoots, so that is perfect. We didn't have to look for anybody. Yeah, so I'm gonna call you off. Sorry, no but, worries. Um, piggybacking off of that, I think it's important to know that if you are an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, you don't necessarily have to know everything. No. But if you don't, you should build a team of people that can. So it's how she's saying, 
you know, yeah. like your, your boyfriend does a lot of the marketing materials, mm-hmm. so it's like you don't have to deal with that. You know what I mean? I'm so so grateful. You're more than, you're more than, you can definitely take it, all, take it all on if you want to. I handle a lot of the things for my business, but if you just really don't know and have no interest in hoeing, find people that can do it for you. And you will. Yeah. I, I, I can. I'm so lucky that I even have models that will, um, some days we pay them, some days it's more trade, and they, no matter what, they're just there. Mm-hmm. And they will be there, and it's, it's not that no one's getting paid. It's all about creating this new thing to be excited about. Yeah. Um, and there are so many schools in every major city that there each school has some kind of marketing program, has some kind of communications program where somebody is studying editing or film or that you can even reach out to them yeah. and be like, hey, let's start this thing together. Right. People like to be in things in the beginning when it's new. Yeah, yeah. And, and, there's, and there's nothing wrong with... Um, collaboration on projects and wow. using it as a skill builder and a way to learn like that's how you become better at what you do and that's also how you become more marketable so i know a lot of people that turn their nose up when you're like oh can you help me out can we collaborate can you do it for free and they're like no pay no way but yeah. believe me in this industry if you don't have a strong portfolio if you don't have any real skills or tangible skills you will get nowhere so and collaborate know, as much as you have to and you know some people <laughs> say no there's someone that's going to say yes. yeah exactly like, it's they're like you're going to always need that but just don't give up don't when someone says no, don't think like, oh, well, everyone said no. No, yeah. one person said no. Yeah. I think as humans, we use our language to be very general yeah. instead of talking about what really happened. Yes. Because I, when I first started reaching out, our first photo shoot, we did pay everybody. And that was great. But some people were still like, oh, I work with an agency for models. I can't do, I can't um, model for a makeup line unless I'm getting X, X amount, amount of royalties because of the repromote. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, well, we can't meet that. And at first, I remember feeling like, damn, like, I really want to work with this person. And my boyfriend was like, well, that's just one person. Yeah. Like, there's still, like, 100 other people that applied on this um, little post that I did on Facebook. And that's another thing. Utilize your Facebook groups. There's a Facebook group for everything. Yeah. And that's where I found all of my models. Mm-hmm. And I have quite, like I was saying earlier, a good repertoire um, or a good list of models. Not <laughs> Um, no, that's good. And then I, uh, it seems like, do you use a, a lot of them kind of continue, yeah. uh, repeatedly? Oh my God, all the time. Yeah. Like, so I like, use the same it's one. the same thing. It's about building relationships. Cause it's like one day when she's shooting an ad campaign for her, um, uh, makeup line, guess who she's going to call those makeups that have been dedicated and committed to Absolutely. Her, and they know? use me like, and there are plenty of times where they're doing, you know, in LA, I will say that everyone does multiple things out here. It's mm-hmm. also a little bit, I feel like in New York, people do what they're doing and they'll hustle in their in their own industry yeah. but in LA everyone works in different industries yeah so like a lot of my friends who are models are also actresses and I, one of them is also doing her whole her own web series and so she always asked me to do makeup for it and normally it would be like oh yeah well this is my day rate this is my half day rate but because she does so much for me for free I just do the You're same thing to do it in like it's it is a collaboration. We're all here. And it makes it so much more fun. Like, you don't even realize you're not getting paid. Yeah. Like, I like to do makeup. Yeah. Do I want to get paid? Absolutely. I need to get paid because I freelance. Mm-hmm. But one day a month or one day every few months that she actually asks me, I'm more than happy to dedicate my time because I know she's going to produce a great product. I want that relationship to grow. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get anywhere technically alone. Right. Like, collaboration is definitely... And I forgot to mention, so the tagline for the Creators Club is um, shaping artists into multifaceted business professionals. So you actually just touched on that. That's the fact nice. that, like, honestly, today it's not about having one hustle. You should have multiple hustle, multiple yeah. hustles, multiple streams of income. So it's just really about teaching professionals how to manage all of their passions, all of their desires, and kind of making them work as one. Um, mm-hmm. I want to go back to what you said earlier. After I thought about it as you were talking... Um, when I moved to New York, no, I didn't know people that started their own businesses, but I also realized that when I moved to New York, my focus and my intention was different. At that time, mm, I was going it. to finish school and I was also going to pursue a career as a dancer. So ah. I, was, I was opening up my network to that. You see got what I'm it. saying? It wasn't until I got here where I was focused more on being an entrepreneur and building my business that that's when I started reaching out to more people like you. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So that kind of opened And that's up probably now. the same thing for me. Yeah. I didn't think of it as a possibility like no one in my family was like start your own business yeah. they were like make good money yeah and it was like okay yeah and so that was like all right i'm gonna make good money and i had great jobs yeah. um but it is true i don't think i was even open to it and i know that the resources that i've utilized in la i am 100 percent positive they exist in new york mm-hmm. i'm also probably 100 percent positive they exist in boston Um, I think with where that the internet is now 
And for millennials, because we're technically considered millennials. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself a millennial because I'll meet these 22-year-olds and I'm like, damn, you guys know so much. Um, And then I realize when I look at the age bracket, I'm actually in the millennial. Mm -hmm. But there are so many resources on the internet and there are so many people who I'm reading these articles that people want to be their own boss. Yes. Whether they are freelancing, whether that's they're like starting the their own business, now. like nobody wants to give back to major corporations. And that was starting, like when I was in school, I remember reading about stuff with Walmart or big corporations and being like, damn, that's, you know, that's a little crazy. Yeah. Um, and I mean, still going there anyways, and just because it was what's available. And now there's so many more like brick and mortar that's just mom and pops. Right. But yeah, I think the resources that are now available, if people look, no matter what you look for, you will find answers. Yeah. Whether it's for something good or bad, you will find the answers of what you're looking for. I just think that people go for the immediate first thing that they find and stop. Yeah. Just don't stop. Yeah. Especially if you're passionate. To follow up on that, um, I actually posted a clip on the Creators Club Instagram a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. There was an interview with Issa Rae, um, and she was talking about um, how a lot of people have this tendency to want to network up and go straight for like big brands and, and big names versus thinking about networking across. Mm. And, um, t- t- you know, yeah. continuing on that, I remember, like I said, when I met you, I remembered the impression you left on me. And not too long after that, I was oh. like, hey, Donna, I have a project. Do you yeah. want to do it? Do you remember that? I, I couldn't do the first one. Right. But since then, we worked together twice yeah. on paid projects. Which is awesome. You know what I mean? And it's because, um, and that's just like learning how to network and just kind mm-hmm. of, don't not being afraid to reach out to people when you meet them. Right. You know what I mean? And I meet a lot of people where they've they've done projects or they've been on sets and I'm like, so you connected with nobody? Like, don't get on sets and only think, oh, I only know the director or only to know other talent. Right. Know the makeup artist, know the mm-hmm. stylist, know everyone because they're on other things. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, like I was there to help Tiffany with some of the social media stuff. We had a conversation. Next thing you know, you're doing makeup for a high profile client. Right. So she did um the makeup that's on Rudy's um single cover for black and white, yeah. which I'll show here <laughs> and then also um she did the makeup for his music video you know what i mean yeah. so again like just make sure that every time you're doing something even if you're just meeting somebody in a coffee shop or on the street always um present your best self and always feel comfortable talking about what you do and what you love and what you want to get into because you really never know what opportunities person that you're just walking by has for you yeah i actually think of every time i go out as a networking opportunity yeah because you don't know who you're gonna meet um, I definitely felt that in New York, I would meet people on the subway. Yeah. Like I would be putting on my lipstick or something and someone would respond and be like, you did that so perfectly. Are you a makeup artist? <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, come visit me at my store. Yeah. And then now out here, like literally every time I go to Universal, like I'll bring business cards with me because people will comment on my makeup. Like yeah. I have blue lipstick, so I'll wear blue lipstick every time I go to Universal because I'm a Ravenclaw. Mm. Um, and that's a Harry Potter reference, but nonetheless. Um, I'll wear it and people will be like, what is that? And you can just give out your business card. I think, and I struggled with this in the beginning. I was always shy. Mm -hmm. I would be afraid to like, if somebody comments on my makeup, I'd be like, thanks. And if my boyfriend was with me, he'd be like, give them a card. And I would just kind of be like, a little bit. Yeah. And he'd be like, she has a makeup line. She's getting a little shy. And he would talk for me, which was cool. But now it's actually gotten me comfortable enough. Like if people say something, I'm like, thank you so Uh. much. And I, I think it's just. Be authentic and be yeah. real. Like, if you feel silly, tell yeah. someone you feel a little silly. Yeah, because it's like, well, how else do people know that you have it if you don't yeah. tell them? You know what I mean? So I, mean, I think that's another appetizer. tip. I think that's another tip that we can discuss is just, like, be prepared. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, if you sell merchandise or have uh, something that exists online or whatever, um, people should be able to access it. And it yeah. shouldn't have to be like, oh, yeah, I do I do makeup, but or here, I can't show you, for you. Or I don't have a car where you can check with me. And no, I'm not on Instagram. And no, I don't have a website. Like, there's just no, there's just no room for all of that anymore. Like, 2017, you should have all of those things. You yeah. should have everything you possibly need to be able to market yourself like, like that. You should have videos on your phone, pictures on your phone. You should have Instagram, a website. You should be on every platform that is relevant to you and your brand. Absolutely. And even... Even just having Instagram is now working as a portfolio for most people. And the follower thing, since you mentioned the follower thing earlier, Mm -hmm. I don't have a huge following. Um, And so that really held me back in the beginning Mm -hmm. because every other makeup line that is an indie brand that has started, the founders had really big followings on Instagram Mm -hmm. prior. Gotcha. And that really intimidated me. And so I definitely think that they had an upper hand, but that's their journey. My journey is totally different. And the biggest thing I would say is don't, you can look at what other people are doing to just know what's happening in the industry, but just do what you want to do. You it, that's why you start your own business. Yeah, so that leads to my next question. So this is the million dollar question. So mm-hmm. what drives you? What drives you every day? What makes you wake up and say, you know what? 
I'm going to stick to pursuing this dream or what I, the life that I chose. What drives you? People. Okay. Uh, so I have a lot of these people that will message me on Instagram or email me. And they'll just talk about how I taught them how to do winged eyeliner in a tutorial that I did. Or I'm so inspiring with like the positive quotes that I'll put on and it's really made their day. Nice. And then that's like the first thing I'll wake up to. Um, and that will make my day. So I'll see that and see the impact that I can have on others. And my what I love the most about the world, especially how it is right now, is the ability to connect with everyone all over. Yeah. Um, we're not limited at all. It, we are probably, this time, is the most fortunate to be doing anything because we have really unlimited possibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think that is what drives me, the unknown. Like, it's scary. And I sometimes I'm like, God damn it, I need to hustle more as a freelancer to make money. Mm -hmm. But then I get very drawn in like, well, who do I want to be in the world? I want to be someone who shows that you can be positive, you can have pink hair, and you can still be a business person. Awesome. It's just a matter of what you believe. Mm -hmm. And I also am very much in what you put out, you get back. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if I had, if I could tell the world and do one thing, it would be to be yourself. <laughs> Connect with others and don't hold things back. I think we hold a lot inside yeah. because, again, that looking good, we worry about that. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessary because it's you're... It's that waiting for permission thing. Yeah. You know it's... what I mean? It's like you don't have to wait for anybody's permission to go and do no. you. Like you decide, like you said, you said, I think about who I want to be in the world. Once mm -hmm. you decide that and once you create the vision for your life, from there you just create those steps and create that blueprint and you do it how yeah. you want to do it. You know, there's no more rules anymore. I want to be a positive entity where people can see that I've done it, that they can do it also. Mm -hmm. And I just happen to also sell makeup and do makeup. So that's my way to have a physical way to connect with people. I can be like, well, let me do your makeup. And I think that reason I have reoccurring clients is because of my energy and how I am. Like, I don't judge anybody. I don't want anyone to ever feel left out. So if I'm even at a party and I see someone sitting by themselves in the corner, I will go up to them and talk to them so they don't feel left out. Oh, okay. And that's even when I look for models. I don't always just look for the Victoria's Secret model type, like I use a lot of plus size models. Like I'm plus size too. Like mm. it would make sense to, yeah. you know, have them. And I remember when we worked with uh, one in particular, she always commented how she never gets beauty jobs mm -hmm. because she's plus size. But she'll get clothes jobs because of all the industries. But uh, cosmetics companies don't really want to use her. And yeah. I'm like, no, that's all. Not that that's all I want to use because, mm -hmm. again, I don't want to leave anybody out. Yeah. But I don't want... I feel like when you look at a makeup ad, it's always someone who's so perfect. Yeah. And nobody's perfect. Right. Even the perfect is That's what the makeup's for. Yeah. To make that illusion of looking perfect. Exactly. And it's photoshopped <laughs> and all these other things. Yeah. And it's like makeup is fun. It's a way to be self-expressive. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people to feel that way. I don't want people to wear makeup because they feel they have to. Yeah. I don't want someone to have to go to work and be like, oh, my boss said I needed to wear makeup. And if your boss tells you that you need to wear makeup, well, let's find a makeup regimen for you that you're going to feel comfortable in mm -hmm. that's going to leave you feeling empowered and self-expressed. I, I really like that perspective because I think that I think that people forget um, makeup is a form of art within yeah. itself, you know, and it's just like you how you use your style to express yourself. Mm -hmm. People do makeup that, that expresses themselves. Lipstick. You know what I mean? That's so why I have dark lips on today. I was I, like, well, let's <laughs> match all this paint. Right. I think that's awesome. <laughs> cool. So... So what, what are you up to right now? What's next for the Donna Delia brand? First of all, what's the name of your cosmetics line? Incendio Beauty. So um, it's called Incendio Beauty. And Incendio in Latin means fire. And I'm very inspired by all things mythological and fantasy. So I really relate to a phoenix with rising up from your ashes. Basically never giving up. Like mm -hmm. even when you're your ugliest, you can still rise up from that. And I wanted, like I was saying earlier, to make sure that no one feels left out. Everyone feels like they are capable of doing it because you are. Mm -hmm. You can do anything that you want. And so I really love the fire and being like this fiery fairy. Uh, so what's next for Incendio Beauty and Donna Delia together is we started streaming last week on Twitch. Uh, if you're not familiar with Twitch, I wasn't up until a month ago. Twitch is a live streaming platform that really focuses on gamers. So people who play video games uh, will stream their videos on Twitch. And it started with streaming eSport games. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of went into this. And now Twitch is also looking for content creators that aren't just about gaming. And right now there's a lot of body painting on Twitch. There are makeup tutorials, but I haven't really found anybody who's a professional makeup artist that is on Twitch doing just regular teaching people how to do makeup on the regular. Mm -hmm. Like even what primer is good for you, what foundation is good for you. So we started doing videos last week, which like first one we did was here's some holiday makeup and glitter lips. Of course there's fun because I like glitter and fantasy. 
but we're also going to be doing like, here's how you do, here's three different ways to do winged eyeliner, depending on your eye shape. And it'll be like, boom, boom, boom. And what's really cool about it is it's live. So people come in to your chat room and they'll just start asking you questions um, and you build community that way. And it's insane because I didn't know this existed a month ago. Mm -hmm. And now like, even within the week that I've been doing it, my Twitter has gone up, my Instagram's gone up, and I've gone up on Twitch also, and the support that the other content creators are giving me yeah. blows my mind. What do you think are the uh, benefits of using Twitch as opposed to um, like Instagram Live, as opposed to YouTube, as opposed to Facebook Live? What do you think are the benefits of using Twitch? Um, well, I think it's where platforms? your demographic is. Okay. So for me, um, my target audience is a lot of, as I like to call, geek chic. So people who are also into fantasy, who want to use makeup for fun, because everything that we have as a product name, it's mm -hmm. something magical. Like our black eyeliner is called Witch's Brew. This lipstick is called Dark Fairy. Uh, and on Twitch, it's a lot of cosplay, a lot of Comic-Con, and that's also the makeup that I like to do. But there are people that are on there, like there's millions of people on Twitch, and being that was going to be my demographic, it made sense to go that way. We're on Facebook and doing Facebook Live. The demographic tends to be a little bit older. Okay. And, and not to say that I don't want to go after those people, but to start off with, it's mm -hmm. really good to have a niche focus. Yeah. Um, that way you don't go all over the place. Mm -hmm. That was one of the mistakes that I did starting a business. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I wanted to go after these people, but I didn't really know how, and I didn't have a, a very clear sense of it. Yeah. So now that we have the clear sense of it, um, one of my mentors says clarity is cash. Uh, things have been going really well. So owning in on this niche, um, and with Instagram Live, we do Instagram Live also, but it disappears. Your Twitch streams stay. Uh, you can okay. opt for like, you can stream for two and a half hours and that's not going to go away. It'll stay no. for, I think, 9, 30 to 90 days, depending on if you're a partner or an affiliate. Gotcha. But it will stay longer where people can find you. And I think that it it's uh, it's longer as a live too. You can go live for like four hours if you wanted to. Oh, versus so I, think on I think Instagram cuts you off after like 30 minutes, right. I want to say. So then you have to restart it up again. Mm -hmm. um, but I do use Instagram and Twitter to support Twitch. And I use Facebook. I'm on every social media platform. So real um, quick, how do they find you on those platforms? What's your... So everything is Incendio Beauty. Instagram, right. Twitter, uh, Twitch, it's all Incendio Beauty. Um, nothing has, nothing will be changed. And it's all also on our website. And if you go to our Instagram, there's a whole link. So there's a, are you familiar with Linktree? I'm not. So Linktree is a really good tool to use for Instagram because it's one link, but when you click that link, you can list multiple links. So if you are somebody who has a business, but has several businesses, but also wants to show people like your, your blog, your YouTube channel, and your website, using Linktree will allow you to do all of that. So you oh, can have wow. multiple links on your Instagram instead of oh. just the one. We're getting technology lessons yeah. today. Yeah, oh, I can so see So I'll, I'll include links to yeah. all of those. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch Linktree, Link and then also all the links where you can find her on social media. Yeah, because that right. those are have been really informative. Okay, so that wraps our <laughs> first interview <laughs> of the Creators Club. Um, thank you so much for coming. You oh, thank you so for having me. You so great to have, and your this energy an was amazing. Um, again, I'm going to show you guys all her social media links in a, uh, somewhere below, maybe on the screen somewhere. Definitely check her out and follow her. Um, you guys are going to want to keep watching because we're going to post a new interview every week. Uh, they'll be available on YouTube as well as on the website, which is www.accessthecreatorsclub.com. Okay, follow us on Instagram at the same handle as well as we'll be on Twitter soon. Uh, thank you. Hi guys, so today is officially the first taping of the Creators Club. We have our first guest in the house, Hi. Donna. So we're gonna be talking about some really exciting things, so just stay tuned. And this will probably be up in the new year, in January, not sure at, at which, uh, which date, but it will be there. I'm excited, are you excited? I'm very excited. <laughs> Let's do it. Woo.